Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Doyle. Welcome to this episode of Beneath the Bones. I want to tell you a little story from this weekend. When I go out in the woods, the majority of the time, I am perfectly happy not encountering anybody. I don't want to see another hunter. I don't want to see a hiker. I just like the solitude of being in the woods by myself. This weekend was the opening weekend for Muzzleloader in New Hampshire. I went up to a spot that is at the end of a dirt road. At the end of that dirt road, the road kind of whittles down and turns into essentially like a little four-wheeler trail. And then that continues up to state land. So what I did is I parked at the end of this dirt road. And along the dirt road, there's houses. And I proceeded in the woods. And as you can imagine, when I start my day, I do a bit of monologue, right? So I'll hang my camera up my backpack and I'll talk about what I'm going to do that day. And so I step into the woods to do that. I'm getting set up and I hear this crashing, right? Coming through the woods. And the first thing that comes to mind for me is maybe it's a bull moose. He's going to come down. He's going to cross this, this old, uh, you know, old road, right? That's pretty well filled in. It's more like a four wheel trail at this point. And I grab my camera, I'm squatting down and out steps a guy. Okay. Now the guy doesn't have any, any orange on, doesn't have a gun. It's like seven in the morning and it's pretty much just getting light. And, uh, and he says, what are you doing? I said, well, hunting, but I was just filming. I thought maybe a bear or a moose was going to come through the woods here. And so then he asked me, uh, then he, then he asked me, he said, uh, you don't have enough orange on for hunting. And I had an orange hat on, my Tracking 200 hat. I said, well, in New Hampshire, you don't need to have orange on. It's not the law. So he then asked me where I was from. I told him a lie. <laughs> he then uh, proceeded to ask me uh, a few more questions, like where I was going, who I was, where I parked. At this point, I asked him if he was a law enforcement officer, to which he said no. And he then proceeded to uh, insinuate that I shouldn't be there, that I couldn't be there by saying that it was private property. Now, I use Onyx. With Onyx, I have all the landowner, landowner um, uh, parcels downloaded. I know who owns which land, right? I know where they are. And also, since I was on this road, I had the right of way on the road, which continues up past a few kind of um, parcels that are not uh, lived on, right? These are parcels just land. In New Hampshire, you can hunt uh, private land so long as it's not posted. So he then uh, asked me a few questions about posted property. He said, uh, "He said, you know, you're on private land." I said, "Well, I'm. I can be on private land." Uh, and he, he said, well, "You can't be on posted land." I said, "Yes, you're right. You can't be on posted land. I'm not hunting any posted property." Um, and I was, I, I made my team my cool, right? But this kind of back and forth, right? This is a, this is kind of a tense situation that. I certainly wasn't prepared for seven in the morning. I don't think my second cup of coffee had fully kicked in yet. And it's not the type of way I like to hunt in the woods, right? I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to counter anybody. So is it hunter harassment? Well, uh, each state law varies slightly. Uh, in New Hampshire, it is to, to obstruct, obstruct uh, or interrupt. And so was he harassing me? I mean, he was asking me some questions, right? He was certainly a concerned landowner. He wanted to make sure I wasn't on his land, right? But I probably didn't need to answer all those questions, right? And so that's the point of this video. Um, I want you, when you're going out, to be mentally prepared if you were to encounter a situation like this, okay? So I thought about this a lot while I walked around the woods. I did nine miles and uh, I was a little sore afterwards, right? Got some, some back issues going on, but the rib is healed up good. So uh, I, I, I thought about this on my walk. And I think that in the case where you've gone to an area, right? And you're, you're at your truck or you're, you're leaving your vehicle and you see a landowner, somebody coming towards you, right? They may be in all kind of a, a huff and puff look like a tizzy, right? I think the best thing to do, right? If this was me, I'm gonna tell you my story, right? I would ask them if I could help them. That would be the first place I would start. Now, there's a reason for that. Is one, you could have parked or I could have parked in a place that's totally inconvenient for them. And it's a chance to earn some really good will as a hunter to go back and maybe they're getting a delivery that day and there's a big truck coming or something. 
And all they're asking you to do is, is move down the road a little bit and trying to catch you before you leave, right? Totally plausible scenario. Maybe less plausible, but more to your benefit, maybe there's a big old buck that's been hanging out in their backyard, eating all their bushes, and he's out there at that moment, and they want you to come get him, right? That would be pretty sweet. And then there's a scenario where maybe this person is upset, right? Maybe they're a non-hunter or they're a concerned landowner, and they want they don't want you there, okay? Now, I can, I can understand if I lived on a dirt road where I barely saw people, and a person came in, a strange person, I might be a little alarmed, right? That kind of makes sense, but it's hunting season, and... If you're wearing the hunting garb and you have a hunting gun or bow or whatever it is, then, well, things kind of add up and you kind of know what that person's doing. So maybe you should be a little less concerned. But let's say this person approaches you and you're very nice and you say, uh, can I help you? And they start to ask you questions about what you're doing there. I think the next question that I would ask them without answering those is if they're a law enforcement officer. Okay, and if the answer to that was no, then if I couldn't help them, I'm not a law enforcement officer, and I know I'm in the legally right, then I would say, I'm gonna go hunting, continue on my day. And I wouldn't necessarily suggest that they call law enforcement, right? I wouldn't try to escalate the situation. Um, I would you know, carefully back away from them, and I would go about my way. Because the truth is, you have the right to be in the woods. You have the right to be there and you've earned that privacy, you've earned that time in the woods and you don't need to be impeded. Now, this individual, who knows, I may or may not encounter them again. Um, just this interaction, right, alone could be enough to make me not want to go back there, right? This avoidance scenario where I have, you know, am I going to encounter this person? Am I going to get issue again? Okay, and that I'm sure to a lot of hunters one time being in a place, having that kind of negative experience, you may just want to avoid that and not go back to that spot. And that's not right either. That's not right. I don't think that's hunter harassment. Um, I don't know the legal, you know, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but it's, it's unfair, right? If those woods are, are public and you can access them and that's where you want to go, then I think it's fair that you should go there. So what I kind of warn everybody to do with this video is to just think about that scenario, okay? If you were to encounter somebody, how would you handle it? In the past, when I've encountered people, it's usually just a wave, right? I've had uh, landowners, I was walking down the road at one point, and this guy was out, I don't know, cleaning his vehicle or, or something. I had tracked a big buck and I had a long way to go back to my car. And he saw me and he came out and he started chatting with me and he once he learned how far I had to go, he said, I'll give you a ride. So he, I hopped in his car with him. He took me all the way back. There's some tremendously nice and helpful people out there. And I think you got to start by giving the person the benefit of the doubt and offering to help them. I understand, you know, ask them how you could help them. And then from there, you can kind of, you know, kind of shut it down. That's at least what I plan to do in the future. So um, I just, I want to reach out on this. I would love to hear about what other people suggest, right? I think you can comment. Uh, about your experience in the comments below. You know, I really try to keep it positive, keep a positive spin on it, help others out because we're all in this together and uh, really, you know, appreciate everybody tuning in. The track never ends. Looking forward to a great season. Rest season going to just get better and better and want to say good luck to everybody out there. All right, folks.